is where we left off. Olivia, do you remember what we were doing on Friday? No. Yeah, something like that. Okay. So we did CEKT. And the questions that we, I think we did two of them right near the end of the hour. Basically, you were given two sets of numbers, one to find C, one to find K, and then you were asked a question to plug in a number. And where I ended on Friday was saying that you're not always going to be given an initial amount. So you're not always going to be able to find C immediately, which makes them, you know, very different to solve. Um, not necessarily terribly hard, but different. So uh, the, the law of exponential growth is going to be our key wording there that tells us that it's CEKT. Okay? So I'll start off by just writing that down. There were 130 insects after the third day. So it doesn't really tell us, but we're going to be using that as Y, that is T. Uh, you could write you could write the formula with whatever variables you want. It doesn't have to be Y and T. So I'm going to write down 130 equals C E to the K times three, so three K. And uh, from that, that finds us nothing. Like we can't figure out C or K that way. So then I go to the next set of info. And then we've got three, seven days. Okay. So 380, 380 equals C E to the K times seven. <clears throat> well, that pretty much gives us the exact same situation and setup and doesn't help us solve anything at all. Uh, anybody have any thoughts? Like where we go from here? Um, instead of having them both have the same initial day, you have um, the day three as the, like the 130 as the initial calculation for the day seven, and then just subtract like three days from the time. Yeah, that's fine. That is a good idea. That would probably work. That is definitely not how it was intended, but that would probably work. Okay. Man, that's a good one. Good calculus. Like a pioneer calculus. I feel like we should make you immune from being called on for like a week or something. That, yes. was, <laughs> that was pretty You're spectacular. <laughs> no, I that would 100% work. Um, would have never even thought of it. Uh, set one equation equal to C and the other equal to K, and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you had the right idea. So the, the way this was intended to be approached is you've got two equations with two unknown variables. And so you guys were taught to be able to solve that situation with substitution or elimination. We'll do substitution because elimination doesn't work with this. Um, there's, we don't have separate terms. So C is going to be the easiest one to solve for, but it actually doesn't matter if you solve for C or K. So we're going to solve them both for C. So first one, C is equal to 130 over E to the 3K. Or if that bothers you, you can write it as 130 E to the negative 3K. I mean, both of them. Okay. The other one is identical, <clears throat> 380 over E7K. And then the substitution we're going to do is since both of them, uh, actually, honestly, I probably only needed to do one of them to make C equal. Now that I wrote both of them on. Um, as soon as you got C equals, you could have put this information into the other equation right in place of C. 
We probably didn't have to solve this E, but whatever, I already did. So I'm gonna put this in place of C. <coughs> And then this, all this work is, is literally just for us to be able to figure out C. Like this is just a lot more work to find the first variable. <clears throat> so I've got 130 e to the negative 3k <clears throat> equals 380 e to the negative 7k. Now would you guys, do you guys know how to solve it from there? I guess that's what that's right. Kind of different ways we can do it. Anybody have a guess on how to solve that? Uh, you could try and separate the variables with the numbers, like just put them on each side. Like have the like e with e, so divide by e, negative three. Like this. Or I thought that's what you were trying to tell me to do. Top minus bottom, because we can combine them. So it would be negative 3k minus negative 7k. So it would be 4k. All different ways you could do it. You could move that to the top as a positive 7k. But <coughs> uh, I guess 38 thirteenths, whatever that is. And then we're going to have to solve that with natural logs because it's in an exponent. So natural log of both sides. We will get 4k equals ln of 38 thirteenths. And then we would divide by 4. Actually, this is kind of nice. So we found k first. Normally, that's the one that's harder to solve for. So 1 fourth ln of 38 thirteenths. And I, I know what's going to happen is you guys are going to get all the way to the end here and like you'll feel like you're done with the problem because we did so many steps. Like it's a lot of work to get to there. All I did was find us our first constant answer. All this does is let us start the problem again to figure out C. So this one, this one requires a lot of rope. Um, let me kind of go back to where we were, I guess. I mean, it's kind of organization is kind of tough on this. It's definitely easier when you have colors. Um, I know like some of you are pretty rough at doing this on test season. When your problem has so many steps, it can be difficult to organize it in a confined space. Um, what I would recommend if you're doing this in notebook paper, just keep going straight down. Like, don't don't try to cram everything into one spot. Just use a lot of paper. You'll get you'll get used to doing that for higher level classes. So we pick either one of these two. One thirty equals <coughs> c e to the three times we now know what k is. One fourth ln thirty eight thirteen. So I guess 3 fourths ln 38 thirteenths. Um, we're going to divide both sides by this to solve for C. Uh, can anybody figure out C yet? I got it. A lot more numbers, but yeah. Okay. And now I can actually read what the question wanted me to find because um, I didn't even look to see what it was asking us. I just spent all this time trying to figure out C and K. And you would obviously want to save this number in your calculator. It's not something you're going to want to type in again. Correct. We could have chosen either one of those two and it should have been the exact same answer. So I am going to go over here and read the actual question. Approximately how many insects were, oh, okay, well, our question is to find C. 
So I guess that one was kind of nice because we don't have to keep going. So the, the actual question was C. Um, now that brings up the fact that they didn't tell us how we wanted how they wanted the answer written. Um, to me, when it says the wording approximately how many insects, we can't have a partial insect. So the answer I'm going to guess is 58 because it's just about 58 insects at the initial population. Since it's technically a little bit higher than 58, I would bet 59 would also be acceptable. Traditionally on the AP test, um, when you have to round like for problems like this, they'll accept both. Because it's just kind of your perspective on whichever number is better. Okay, uh, to be honest, this one's going to be the hardest problem today. It's, it's, this one is going to be the hardest problem today. Oh, you, uh, this one is the, the only reason we're done is because when I got to the end of the question, that's what it actually wanted us to find. How many did you start with? So I guess if you did it math method. Yeah, sure. No, I, I don't you'll know. Get the same answer. You'll, you'll get the that same answer. The only thing that's going to be different is when it says um, how many were the initial population. By math setting day three as zero, you would need to plug in negative three for time. And it would give you the initial population. Go ahead. Did anybody else get 64.6 for C? Did anybody else get 58 and change? I do not know the correct, I didn't look up the correct answer. I just told you guys to type it in. You got 58 as well? Okay, I can look at it after to see if yours is right or late. Okay. Um, so if we did, I forget it from um, the last day. How would, what were you putting for time as the initial population? Like a zero? Zero. Okay. And then that would just be to the zero, which is one. And then C is the initial population. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, halfway. First thing, 100% ignore what it says up here. Got it. Done. It's easy. It's, it's not wrong, but it also has details that you will forget. And so uh, don't try to memorize it. Got it. Uh, you guys have plenty enough things to memorize for the AP test. Don't add to it. This is how they had you guys do it in, in pre-calc. I'm pretty positive. I think they had you guys figure out the K value for half-life by using a lower formula. It's not wrong, but you're not going to want to memorize it. Uh, zircon sample contains 4,000 atoms of a radioactive element, 235U. Given that 235U has a half-life of 100, 700 million years, how long would it take to decay to 125 atoms? Isn't U uranium? Yes. Yeah. Why is it in zircon? It also should be uranium-235. I don't know why it has to be How dare they write it in a different order? I don't know. I'll just take too much on it. Sorry, yeah. Yep. Okay, Half-Life automatically has the exact same setup for me. Okay? It tells us our initial amount. It doesn't use the wording to say that that's at time zero, but it tells us we have 4,000 atoms, which means that's what we are starting with. So I can immediately put that in. Now, I would bet you answer keys will not have a Y right there. They'll probably have like an A or A0 or something. Like, it doesn't matter the variables you're writing down. It's still fine. I find it easier to keep the same variables so that you're working with the exact same formula and not have to like try to remember different versions. You know, here's where most people are going to get stuck. Um, how, how do it does it tells us sort of information how do we use the 700 million years 
to figure out the case. Not leaving two for two. So with the past life, it would like your Y would let you do fast things. Yes. And then you are on a roll today. That comes up. Does that change? Yeah. Right. Uh, when it tells you it's half life, that means you have half the amount that you started with. So we started with 4,000. When we start with 4,000, half of the amount would be 2,000. So it's telling us the point, 700 million, which is absolutely annoying to write that many zeros. 2,000 would be the amount. So it gives us a time and an amount, which is the two pieces of info we needed. So we can put that info in here. And now the reason I don't like the portion that's written up on top is it's telling you K is a negative number. And so it's, it throws some people off because they remember it incorrectly <coughs> slash they forget the negative and they accidentally make um, an increasing amount, like instead of instead of the amount decaying with a negative k value, they'll forget a negative symbol because that up there had nothing with a negative. Uh, so k times seven hundred million. This one's not more difficult than the previous problem, it's just more work because there's bigger numbers. 2,000 divided by 4,000 would be our first step. Our, hold on, I gotta count the thing. Our next step would be to solve for K by taking the natural log of both sides. So the ln of 0.5 would equal 700 million K times LN of E, which is, I, I'm, kind of skip, uh, bless you. I'm kind of skipping this work because I feel like you guys have done it quite a bit in the homework, that you kind of know how to do this step in your head now. So LN of 0.5 divided by 700 million is your K value. It is awfully cruel to pick 700 million to be a half-life. Especially with people like civilized like myself who you look at that and you're zero and it's super hard to count. Okay, well, now that I figured out K, I have a formula that can specifically tell me how much of the amount would be left at any given time for this element. And so I would do, uh, I don't know if I would want to write it as L and a 0.5 divided by 700 million. I kind of want to write it as one over 700 million. I okay, with crazy big numbers, this is absolutely why you have to use like the store feature on your calculator or why it's really important that you do not make this a decimal. Even, even when your decimal is off by like one ten millionth, it throws your final answer off a decent number of years. Like when you're talking about 700 million years, like the numbers are so big that your accuracy has to be stupidly number of decimals. I mean like, I don't even know how many decimals that would technically work at for a sig fig. It would be a lot. So don't use decimals if you can help it. And then the actual question says what? Like how many are left? Oh, how long would it take to decay to 125? Oh, that's a little bit more work. So we're not gonna plug in T. We are going to put 125 in place of Y and solve for T. Okay. Uh, not yet, you gotta divide by 4,000 first. I'm gonna shorthand this because I don't wanna write that number repeatedly. 
So the squiggle stands for that. Divided by 4,000, um, I'm sure that reduces nicely, but I can't think of it. So 125 divided by 4,000 is something that reduces. E to the long power. Take the ln of both sides now. And then we are going to get ln of 125, 4,000. And then you're going to divide that by 1,700 million ln of 25. That would be great to type in your calculator. Uh, it's also going to be a really big answer. I mean, it takes 700 million years to get down to 2,000. If you want to get down to 125, that's going to have to um, half-life a lot more times. Uh, so we 700 million to get down to 1,000. Then it would be 700 million to get down to 500. 700 million to get down to, oh, this is going to be exact answer. Yeah. 250, what is it, like 35, 3.5 billion or yeah. something? Oh, yeah, 3.5 billion, but it's five half-lives. I don't know if that's correct. 3.5 billion? Years. Like yeah. five half lives. It's like just off. Yeah. Well, that's great. Yes. I got that. Right. Years so, uh, what is that times 10 to the 11? Your calculator. Something like that. Oh, did your calculator tell you? Oh, no, I just typed me 35, 3.5 billion. Yeah. I, There's no way it wrote billion, is it? Yeah, I was trying to read that. I think if, yeah. I, what, if, I, if I added one more decimal or one that. more zero, it would have gone to the scientific notation. Oh. Did anybody tell them scientific? I don't want to write 3.5 billion. <laughs> I, I actually you're right. I I guess <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I don't know if that's actually acceptable on the AP test or not. No, no it's not. Yeah. They should make it. Just write out the zero. I mean I, I don't see why it wouldn't be, but I've never seen an answer written or scored that way. I wouldn't chance it. But you're also not gonna get a number that big because they wouldn't want to grade that. Like grading <laughs> that you have to count those zeros yourselves too. So Okay, oh, all right, perfect. We're doing good time. Uh, this is the last problem we need to get to. Oh, sorry, yes. Did I, did I rush through that one too much? I was trying to push to get through all three problems because I knew all three of them weren't small. Good thing is, we're done with unit seven. All right. Yay. Seven is very short. Oh, oh, cool. Eight. Eight looks like it's crazy long, but it's actually only like four topics. Um, one of them is area, three of them are volume, but the volume ones are spread out over a bunch of sections. Not needed, but it is. Okay, this is Newton's law of cooling, even though I don't think it says so. Uh, this has frequently been a pre-response question. Don't know why. A couple years ago, they had one about a baked potato cooling off iron of an oven. Uh, a different one, like ten years ago. Ten years ago, I think it was uh, a pizza cooling off. <coughs> Um, they have had one where you warmed up, but whatever. A cup of hot chocolate placed on a table cooled at the rate of. Of. We should know the problem here. Yeah. <laughs> DHDT equals day that per minute, where H represents the temperature, T is minutes. If the coffee was 160 initially, what will its temperature be 10 minutes later? Um, we have seen. Does anybody notice the first thing why this is? that this is written drastically different than the other. It's temperature equivalent. Yes. Oh. So it, it doesn't tell us that it fits CE to the KT. It doesn't tell us that it's um, the rate of change of Y, you know, varies with Y. This is sort of the same equation. It, its final answer will end up 
roughly the same. But since it was given to us as a derivative, the, it's kind of done purposely because we are going to integrate it to find the general solution. For better or for worse, if you're given the differential equation, you, you work with it. This is slightly different, which is the reason why they gave it to us, so that you didn't make a mistake writing down the general solution. Okay, so we gotta move things around. Uh, H is on the left, T is on the right. There's an H. So I've got dH over H minus 75 equals negative 0 0.05 ET. And then uh, integrate. Okay. Right-hand side, nice and easy. Negative 0 0.05 T plus T. I haven't really gotten to call it many people all today. Yeah. You could. Uh, it would not be wrong. It's actually easier for us, in this case, not to, only because this is a regular H, so its derivative is 1. If you had multiplied out to negative 0.5, you would need a negative 0.5 as part of that. So it, it ends up working out the exact same. Uh, I guess I was going to call somebody for the how to integrate this. I think somebody I haven't called on forever. Are we? I called on you for a long time. What? How do I integrate that? And if, if you're not sure, you can pass it on to somebody else too. Easy. So you're saying you want to pass it on? Okay. Yeah. Luke, come on, this is four, four people now. Here we go. Uh, Save them. LA. Nice. You guys should be super used to natural log integration by now. The top is the derivative of the bottom. The derivative of h minus 75 is 1. So derivative dh, derivative of h. So it's natural log of the bottom. <clears throat> I'm just, I'm going to tell you, I don't know why they have so many uh, natural log integrations, but it is very common, and so it's something you have to get used to spot, spot. Uh, Marvel, it looks like you're looking up the answers right now. Oh my goodness, you're not even, are you listening to a different video even? You're doing another class while I'm teaching? It's not even like we're doing homework and you're doing a different class. Tell me where to go from here. No, you are not even watching anything before this. You should not pass it on. It seems important that you be able to. Well. Our goal is probably to solve for H, because um, that's going to be the temperature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I figured it would just take a second or two for you looking at it. Okay, so then that essentially cancels out, leaves absolute value H minus 75. <clears throat> and then, I don't know how we used to do this. Aiden, how am I supposed to write the right hand side? That plus C in the power, for whatever reason, they don't usually like that. They write it a different way. Do you remember what that is? Wait, I just had a question. So, are we solving for C right now, though? No, we are solving for H. So, if, if it says that the uh, I'm not, I didn't even read the problem. We're solving for H. Okay, so you can split the top, yep. This is absolutely a step you guys need to get down. When you have a plus C in the power, you can split this apart and E to the C is gonna be written as C. So the right hand side will say C E to the negative 0 0.05 
T. <clears throat> now, H, what was the food it represented? Hot chocolate. Okay. Temperature of the hot chocolate and tea is 10 minutes if the coffee's in the what? Whoa, 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 what do you mean coffee? This must have been, this must have been a, a coffee problem <laughs> originally, and it was rewritten as hot chocolate, but then forgot to exchange coffee. Um, I guess what I was looking for was to see if the absolute value is needed or not. If, I doubt the absolute value is needed because I don't think the temperature of the hot coffee is ever gonna be negative but it could. So if I remove the absolute value, it technically wouldn't matter because it would go into C. So we've got the temperature of the hot chocolate is going to be C. We don't have a plus and minus because the C sucked it up. C E to the negative 0 0.05 T plus 75. Does this never start with 75? It does not because it's not directly on the C. Okay. If I were doing an operation directly to the C, it absorbs it because we just make a different C. But the 75 is on the whole thing. Okay, now the initial amount, the initial temperature will not be C because the initial temperature, when you put T in for zero, we've still got that 75 up there. So we can't just write in the initial amount on these temperature lines. Because it does tell us the initial temperature, right? Yeah. So initial temperature was, was 160. So I'm going to put that in there to figure out C. So it was 160 degrees when E to the po negative 0 0.05 times 0, which is 1, And so then C would be 160 minus 75, which is what? 85? Okay. Uh, e to the zero power is one. Okay, now all I did was find the C value which means I'm going to go up here and write down my completed equation with everything in. Temperature of the hot chocolate will be 85 e to the negative 0 0.05 t plus 75. And then the actual question I was trying to answer, what will its temperature be in 10 minutes? This one's at least sort of nice that you can just type it straight in the calculator, no solving. E to the negative 0 0.05 times 10. Uh, this would definitely be a good candidate for the AP to say in hours, and then tell you 10 minutes. So look out for that. Just because it says 10 minutes here, don't assume it's in minutes. I, I only am because it says in minutes. But AP is very known for saying the variable stands for one unit and then giving you the info in another one, which is dirty up, uh, but hey. <coughs> uh, can anybody type that in? Uh, one minute, six point five. Yeah. One point six point five, five, five. Or you can do that. do tomorrow? Good. Some of you didn't even turn in 7-1, 7-2. 3 is due tomorrow. 7-4 will be due Sunday. Now, I'm not here tomorrow, so obviously tomorrow is for you to finish anything you haven't. Very few people have turned in 7-1, 7-2, 7-3, which tells me a lot of you need to even finish 3 and we just got done with the notes on four. So you, you definitely have a lot of work to do. Um, I know it's a shortened hour tomorrow, but 
So you have your shortened hour, plus you have R and R, plus you have at home to, to just try to finish seven three, which shouldn't be an issue by now. Seven three should feel semi easy by now with us doing more difficult work. And then we are going to change gears completely on Wednesday, starting eight one, to the area between two curves, and then we move immediately to volume three dimensions in eight four. And the volume ones go slow, partly because everybody's usually pretty rough at drawing them. And you need to be able to draw them to visualize the information we need. So <clears throat> that's why I have so much time planned for those last sections. If we get done with them earlier, then we will just have that much extra time to study and prep for the AP. It feels weird, but we are, what, three weeks away? Four weeks away from the AP test. Wait, no, one, two, three. Aren't we the seventh? Or are we the thirteenth? Yes. No, it'll be four weeks. And I, it's gonna, it's gonna feel like we are absolutely rushing through everything. But uh, I am only gonna be doing that for notes so that you guys have as much time as possible to work in class to be able to ask questions. So I, I may just be prepared for that for the next three weeks. Whenever we are doing notes together, we are gonna go full speed. And uh, I'm sure there will be days where you're just not like, you know, mentally there for it. So that's why I'll record them and you can watch them later, things like that. It's, it's a difficult class to do full speed all the time. But if nothing, it'll be at least prep you for, you know, when you get to college and there's, you're gonna have classes that are, they definitely feel above you and they're still gonna go full speed whether you're at that spot or not. So it'll be good training for you. Okay, we have